Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about big data's influence on professional sports and specifically the NBA. A lot of people are saying that the NBA has lost its magic. The teams have lost their identity and have become more uniform. Specialist positions like Dennis the Worm Rodman's rebounding mastery have all but disappeared. Are you into sports science and like the new NBA? Or do you miss the anything can happen magical NBA of the past? Let me know in the comments section below. In 2014, the NBA installed cameras in every single arena around the league. These cameras tracked all of the player movements. They tracked multiple different data points. Up until then, data tracking was left to assistant coaches, the coaching staff, and researchers of the team. After the cameras were installed, the data collection function was being done by artificial intelligence. Understandably, the amount of data and number of data points grew a hundredfold. What influence did this data have on the game? How has the game progressed after all the data was introduced? Well, the data itself influenced the NBA in four very specific areas. Data and scoring, data and resting players, data and picking players, and data and matchups. Time to unpack each. Big data and scoring. How has big data affected scoring? Well, scoring in the NBA is very straightforward. You have two pointers and three pointers. The three has ultimately become the make or break of the entire league. The three point shot was initially introduced into the NBA in 1979 as a way to boost scoring numbers, sort of a gimmick. Just to give you a better understanding of how drastic the change has been, in 1979, on average, 7,433 shots were attempted by each NBA team, out of which only 227 were three-point attempts. In 2021, 6,366 shots were attempted per team, out of which 2,494 were three-point shot attempts. That is almost 11 times more three per team. If you want to play in the NBA today, you have to be able to hit the three. The reason why this is happening is something called effective field goal percentage. So if you hit a two-pointer 50% of the time, or you hit a three-pointer 33% of the time, the impact is identical. What this data is telling us is that either you need to take a two-point shot that has a high success rate, so near the basket, or you need to take a three. Anything in between is lost opportunity. The 2018-19 Houston Rockets are the epitome of of this new NBA style, being the first team in NBA history to take more three-pointers than two-pointers. As you can see from their shot chart from that year, it's either a layup or a three. Two things have happened when this system was widely implemented in the NBA. One, scoring in bursts became more common. 15 years ago, if your team was losing by 20 points, then the comeback was considered miraculous. Whereas today, closing a 20-point gap can happen within a matter of minutes. The second and more unpleasant byproduct of this data-driven scoring system is that since teams bought into the same model, they lost their unique identity. If back in the day, you had the high-powered, fast-paced, flashy, offensive-minded Lakers versus the physical, hustling, grinding, defensive-minded Celtics, then today the personalities of the teams have become much more uniform. Big data and resting players, which is probably the most controversial change in the NBA. Through the course of an entire season, it's understandable that players get tired and they get fatigued. And when players do get fatigued, the probability of injuries drastically increase. The more the player is tired, the more likely he is to get injured. And since an injured player can't help a team win, the coaches must protect them. What you started seeing in the NBA is coaches benching healthy players. They're with the team, they're healthy, they're ready to go, but the coach doesn't play them and rests them due to fatigue. How that decision is being made is based on data. But they've gone even further than that, up to a point where a lot of players are now giving saliva samples, which contains indicators of fatigue. Teams are tracking and quantifying the player's diet, what they're eating, how they're hydrating. This allows for better and healthier players, and as a result, a better basketball team. This can also lead to fan frustration. You bought a ticket to go see your favorite player, and that specific day, and according to the data, they are fatigued, 
so they don't play coach's decision. It sucks. Big data and picking players. It's a lot like Fortune 500 companies picking C-level executives. So your CMO, or your CEO, or your sales directors. But there's a very key difference. For a company, if it doesn't work out, if that specific employee doesn't mesh well with the team, they don't deliver on their results, you can always pass and go find another person. Whereas in the NBA, the key way of bringing in new players is through the draft system, which means once you choose who you bring into the team, you're kind of stuck with that person for at least the medium term. So one wrong choice can set you back years. From that perspective, choosing the right player becomes more important in the NBA. And again, this is where data comes into play. So back in the old days, you would have a big group of scouts. So basically basketball gurus that would go to different college and high school games and try to pick and choose players. This player is athletic, he's tall, he's hardworking, he has a good outside shot, but he can't defend. Or he has a good three, but he can't finish around the rim. He can dribble and drive, but can't shoot the three. Based on these scouting reports, key decisions were made that impacted teams for years to come. In today's NBA, everything is completely based on big data. On average, a team needs 42 wins out of 82 in a season to go to the playoffs, which is the ultimate goal of any given season. That basically means a team needs to win more than they lose, a plus 500 team. To achieve these 42 wins, you need to score, which is tracked by offensive rating, and you need to defend, which is tracked by defensive rating. For example, as of today, the Atlanta Hawks are 17th in the NBA with exactly 34 wins and 34 losses. Their offensive rating is 114.6 and their defensive rating is 113.7, which means on average they score one point more than their opponent, which puts them squarely in the 50-50 win-loss area. Compared to that, the current number one team, the Phoenix Suns, whose win-loss is 55-14 and 14, with an offensive rating of 114 and a defensive rating of 105.9, that gives them a net rating of 8.1 points. Teams then draft players to fit that specific statistical role. Of course, everything cannot be done by data analysis and AI when drafting players. There are two key factors that are still done by hand. The psychology of the player and the team chemistry. When it comes to the psychology of the player, we have to take into account that only 400 of the top basketball players in the world play in the NBA. So if you're on that list, then you are special. Every player in the NBA must have a superhuman work ethic and a killer instinct. Team chemistry is crucial for winning championships. Players win games, teams win championships. The Boston Celtics Kyrie Irving drama is a great example of how a player can be great according to the data, but the chemistry is simply not there. Big data and matchups. A matchup is who is guarding who. Before we had all of this big data and AI engines analyzing every move a player makes, the NBA coaches made decisions on matchups based purely on scouting reports. So the report would have things like, don't let him take a three, make him put the ball on the floor and drive. Don't let him drive to the middle, push him towards the baseline. He prefers left-handed drives versus right-handed drives, and so on. This would influence coaching decisions throughout the game. Today's defenses in the NBA are much more versatile. Since offenses have become three-point centric, defenses have evolved to match that strategy. Today, switching is considered a must. As an NBA player, you must be able to guard multiple positions to be considered a good defensive player. Switching and zone defenses have been a long time staple of European basketball, and with new data tools, it's becoming more prolific in the NBA. Basketball has changed. It's never going to be the same again. It's high powered, high offense, three point shooting, gunslinging madness. Me specifically, I like it. I'm a science geek, and the more a favorite sport of mine incorporates science into the decision making, the more intriguing it becomes for me as a fan. I've been playing basketball since I could basically walk, and since I'm from Boston, of course I'm a hardcore Celtics fan. But even back when Pierce, Garnett, and Allen were stealing the show, I was keeping my eye on the statistics and trying to better understand the science behind winning a championship. That's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you like our content, please help us out by subscribing and hitting that like button. See you next week.